Hey DJs, are you struggling to get gigs or feeling stuck in your DJ career? It's time to level up. Grow My DJ Business is the Discord community designed to help you take your DJing to the next level. Grow My DJ Business offers exclusive coaching content from playlists and checklists to masterclasses led by industry pros. Connect with a network of passionate DJs, share experiences, share music, collaborate on tracks, and get inspired by each other's skills. Grow My DJ Business also gives you access to exclusive DJ edits, curated playlists for every genre, and even opportunities to book gigs. Don't just be a DJ, be a Grow My DJ Business DJ. Join our free Discord server today and unlock the full potential of your career. Click the link in the show notes or check our Instagram profile at Grow My DJ Business Podcast to join now. If you love listening to The Get Down, you will love the video version of our show on YouTube even more. With all new audio and video upgrades, we've taken the show to the next level. On YouTube, you get to see our facial expressions, hand gestures, and real passion we have for this industry and for helping you grow your DJ business. Click the link in the show notes or on the Get Down Instagram page to watch the podcast now or search Get Down DJs on YouTube. We would greatly appreciate if you subscribe to our channel, like, and comment any questions you might have that we could bring up on the show. Welcome to the 154th episode of the Grow My DJ Business podcast brought to you by Digital Music Pool and the Grow My DJ Business Discord. My name's Kareem. Gary W here. Little different What's setup on, today. Man? Little different setup today. Yeah, Gary's traveling. He's been up here in Jersey DJ. Um, guy had like the longest weekend that I've ever seen. <laughs> Partly my <laughs> fault. Partly my fault. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've been up here for seven days and I've done a lot, seven gigs already, eight. Yeah. What's maybe? your, how long are you here and how many gigs are you playing while you're here? I'm going to wind up doing, I think 15 in 10 days. I think 15 gigs in 10 days is what it's going to wind Including up a couple Saturdays that are like start like, like 12 to, to three kind of thing. That was, that was, a am I'm, I'm prepping for, uh, my, my set at 12.30 last Saturday and realized that one of the owners decided to text us at 12.30 at night, the night before. You know, I am just got done with a gig. You're gigging. And uh, booked a double for 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. And we didn't book anybody. So guess who was 15 minutes from the venue? And I went and played that set. And, and it was about 100 degrees outside in the sun when they have a roof that they could just retract right over you. <laughs> they did not big shout to Doug spin coming out to, uh, cover me for two hours. So I could, so I could sit down and eat actually, and, and have some water and relax for a second. Yeah, man, we've had like a little bit of a heat wave up here and it's just been, it's been rough out. I feel doing very, gigs. I feel very at home. It, it feels like Florida, like, especially with the humidity out and the, the real feel's been around a hundred here. You know, for us this time of year, it's usually about one oh five every day down there. Which, you know, it feels feels very much at home. But uh I did the brew at the zoo um gig last week. Uh at the Bronx big shot, Zoo, right? At the Bronx Zoo, big shot to specialists. Um, they do a great job, Phil and Fauzi. Uh their team's phenomenal. They're there for like two weeks prior setting up lighting and they make the they make the zoo look beautiful at night. God bless. Um, yeah, crazy. <laughs> but their team's great. I, you know, I get a sound guy there and I get light people and they're phenomenal. Um, I actually had an opener this year, which was great. Wow, Just keeps getting better every year. <laughs> uh, keeps getting better every year. And then, uh, yeah, they did that triple on, on Saturday and then Sunday back on 626 Roof for their afternoon party, which is always a good time. But been a lot of rooftop parties. Last night, a hilarious rooftop story. We are... Uh, they do a really cool event. Uh, yesterday is the anniversary of um, marriage equality. And that's what 626 is named after. 
Um, obviously yesterday was, was June 26th and we're in the middle of the vow renewals. They do vow renewals to anybody that wants to renew their vows up there on this date every year. Um, and in the middle of the renewal, which only lasts like 10 minutes, like, you know, the skies opened up and a storm just came across and we're trying to shut the roof and winds blowing the, the umbrellas over. I got my shirt off covering, covering my, uh, my computer, which was hilarious. Um, they wrap the, the, the renewals. I start playing. It's raining men. It's just, everybody's laughing. We're having a good time. It was, it was pretty, (laughs) (laughs) um, but yeah, that was fun, but a lot of rooftop gigs. It's been fun. Been fun. Nice. Like I mean, that's like here. summer vibes, right? It's, we just talked about it last week, how in New York, all the rooftop stuff, it's just like yeah. where people want to be right now. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's been great, great vibes. It's a, you get to switch up what you play. Usually people are open to hearing just feel good music, you know, whether that yeah. be pop, whether that be house. And we're, we'll, we'll talk about some of those pop records in, in a little bit here. Yeah, man. I had an interesting weekend as well. I was, uh, <laughs> I was in Atlantic City, and then I was at the Jersey Shore in uh, doing a, d- a day party and a night party, two different venues down there. Uh, I went to my first country music festival, guys. <laughs> Where's Ferrari sound effects? <laughs> 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 um, yeah, you, one of our you, uh, you know big big country was DJing the Barefoot Festival in Wildwood, New Jersey this weekend. Uh, our boy TJ was down there too. TJ Bowman was uh, DJing the other stage. So yeah, it was cool to just go check that out, show some love. Uh, heard some acts who I have no idea who they are, but you know, it was just cool to be in that scene and see what's going on. It was sold out and packed. It's Incredible. a four day festival. Uh, and the video from countries like nighttime club sets in the tent in under the tent was like unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> So I mean, it, it was cool. I wish I got to stay there a little longer, but I had to get out of there for my own gigs. <clears throat> but that was that's cool. A, that's a great festival because we're not oversaturated in this area for country music festivals, you know, where we're, we do have a lot of electronic music festivals in the area at this point, and that's a little oversaturated, and they're having more trouble selling tickets for those. And, you know, I think that's why them selling out is, you know, probably a little easier than something else that doesn't, um, that does have a little competition. Yeah. It's unique. It's on, it's literally on the beach. So, you know, you're on the beach for, for the shows and they have tents and obviously the main stage, but, uh, yeah, like different group of people out at those shows than the people that I'm used to being around in nightlife or at EDM shows. (laughs) Yeah. I'm sure your age group vary big time, right? Yeah, like more American flags than I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, more white people than I've ever seen, for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's just that's the nature of the beast, right? But yeah, it's- it was a cool experience, for sure. And, uh, you know, big country's crushing right now, man. This guy's all over the place. And Gotta uh, ride that getting, wave. Ride getting, that- bo- getting booked for, for big venues, big shows, festivals. So shout to country and all the other country DJs doing their thing. Yeah, ride that country wave. So, uh, you know, that was part of my weekend. Like I said, I had a kind of crazy weekend. I, I had multiple shows. I have a Tesla, right? So it, where I live, there's tons of superchargers. Driving down to the shore, there's a lot less. So I was r- running late. I, went, <laughs> I was running late on Saturday for my afternoon gig. And I'm like, you know what? I'll be fine. I can get there. My car will be fine. And I'll just go charge after. I come back and my car is at zero. <laughs> Jeez. So I won't get into why, but it, the battery got drained while I was sitting there during my gig. And like I had to get to another gig at night. And luckily I have the portable charger. So I was sitting at a gas station that was close to where I was like for hours trying to get a couple percent to get to the next supercharger. I finally do. I get to the next charger and it doesn't work. <laughs> Like the, the charger doesn't work. It's a charge point charger. It's not a Tesla charger. It doesn't work. So I'm like stranded. My car's stranded. I'm at the police station trying to get them to help me. I had to literally leave my car, go DJ my gig, and then come back and sit in a regular plug outlet sitting there for like three hours until my car had enough battery to get to where I needed to get to to supercharge my car and then get home. I was a good hour and 20 minutes from home. 
I literally didn't walk into my apartment until 6.30 in the morning. And like, Jeez. my set ended at 2. <laughs> so That's tough, the- tough weekend for me. And I'm, I'm like waiting for all my electric car haters to start hating on me. But lesson learned, I made a huge mistake. It cost me a lot of time and energy. Yeah. So the, that charger that you got to, it just it wasn't compatible with your car or it just actually didn't work? It was working. It just wouldn't charge my car. It was a charge point charger, which technically I have the connector to charge my car, but it just didn't work. Does that happen often? Have you ever had to use one of those or no? No, because I'm usually close enough to a supercharger for Tesla right. and just do that. Right, right. I was thinking about this when you got your car and I'm like, would, would I be able to have, because I, I still live in a pretty, pretty rural area. Um, would I be able to have it would a Tesla? Be very I, hard for you. I'd have a, I'd have a charger at home though, I guess. In my right. Garage. I don't have a charger at home. I always have to use the supercharger. Right. So that'd be the difference. Cause a lot of people have Teslas by me. Like most people, like it's, it's my community's filled with them. Um, but uh, Everybody must have chargers at their house, and that's yeah. What so makes it you know, easily. great weekend in some aspects, and it, <laughs> that, that kind of sucked. But oh, I don't know. Man. Let's let's get into our first topic here. I feel like we've been drawing on about nonsense for for a while. Um, let's do it. So something that you and I have dealt with for a very long time, and part of the reason why Get Down exists is because of bookers, venue owners, managers, forever telling DJs, if you work here, you can't work here. Or we don't want you to work in these other venues surrounding the the city that our venue's in kind of thing. We even see it at a, a greater scale with some of the bigger acts. For example, DJs that are DJing in Atlantic City at certain venues, obviously can't play the other venues in Atlantic City, but also have a 90 mile radius that they can't play any venues within the 90 miles without consent from the venue that they have the deal with. Yeah. And I'm just hearing a lot of our DJs going through this. And if if our DJs are going through it and you and I have been going through it, other people listening to this show are going through it. So how do you handle someone telling you if you DJ here, you can't DJ there? Well, we could talk about this from a couple different angles, right? We could talk about this from a a city angle. Like a lot of times if you're playing at one major spot in in a city, let's say Jersey City, just for lack of of conversation. um, A lot of times if you're playing in one big venue there, you can't play in the other big venue in that city. I sometimes think that that is okay. I think if it's like two rival places, we ha- I only have this happen when it's like a place that's right next door to each other, right? I had it at in Morristown with the competitor that was literally next door. Have it currently in Jersey City at the place that is literally next door to a uh, place that we book at. Um it's annoying, but you you have to understand that from the business owner's perspective, right? Um, and I and I am understanding of that. It doesn't annoy me. Well, one explain bit. that because, like, I don't always understand it. I, I'll I be think the, that I'll be, you know, sort of the on the other side. Yeah, on this, sure. I I, I just think if I was booking talent, I, and I think that you're bringing out a certain crowd and you play a certain style, I want that style to be the style of my venue, right? I, I don't want that music to then translate next door because then why do I go to your venue? If, if the, the DJ style that you bring fits my place, well, it shouldn't fit next door's place because we shouldn't have the same musical style because that's the differential in why people will come to my place and not the place next door. You understand? I, I I do. I think from a DJ perspective, are you booking me every week? If you're booking me every week, I understand. If you're booking me once a month, book me more. <laughs> or I think pay every, me more. To I think it would have that. to be every every other week, right? Like you can't you you cannot tell somebody that they can't go play somewhere unless you're booking them multiple times a month, two to three times a month at least, and at a good rate, right? Like you gotta be getting a decent rate. And right. that's if where I'm the- so important to your venue and your sound, then invest in me and I won't go play anywhere else. Take care of me. 
kind of thing. And that's the negotiation that I think DJs need to take to these places that are telling them, Hey, you can't go play here. So I well, okay, well it, I won't, I absolutely won't. But like my upcharge is going to be X amount more because now I'm handcuffed to only playing your place twice a month. Whereas I could be playing your place two to three times a month and I could be playing that place two to three times a month. And now this is this much, this many dollars. And then you got to make the dollars and cents make sense. Right. So it's like, right. okay, if you're, if it's $2,000, for the month or three thousand dollars for the month well you got to match that right you're taking money out of my pocket so you got to go into nego- negotiation and be like well th- these are the numbers these are the how, how many gigs it's affecting these are what the numbers look like and if you can match that then that i'm okay with just playing your venue Right, I think yeah, that's. A real- I think I was playing a little devil's advocate here, but I, I would, I would agree. I think if there's two rival nightclubs that are doing similar bottle service style stuff with similar style music, I would understand how if you play at one, you really can't play at the other one. I get it. I do understand that. I think where it gets a little crazy is where, you know, venue owners are booking someone once a month. And telling them that they can't play venues that are like 10 miles away and 15 miles away. And like, that's crazy yeah, no, to me. That's nuts. That's nuts. that's crazy to me. And I think as DJs, we sort of, as a young DJ, you sort of just have to do what they're asking you to do, right? But once you start building a name for yourself, like you can start making the rules a little bit, right? Where it's like, you just do and you ask for forgiveness later, whatever that saying is, right? Yeah, yeah. Where like, I'm going to do me. And if you have a problem with it, we can have a conversation about it. And then I can make a decision whether I'm not going to do what you don't want me to do or not based on our negotiation. Because at that point, if you're calling me to tell me, hey, you can't, I don't want you to do this, or it's not a good look, then okay, let's lock in the next, let's lock in the rest of the summer at this rate. And let's pick the dates right now. And I won't play over there. Like, I think these conversations you can use as a negotiating uh, negotiation conversation as well yeah. these and are like, things yeah Sorry. as someone more established you can sort of like flex a little bit if they really want you they're not going to care right as long as at the end of the day you're staying at their place so what happens if it's the flip side and you're not more established and you really want to play this venue but you're having opportunities at other venues I would say really difficult. It's really difficult, but I will always say to a DJ, take the opportunity that's presented to you over the potential of another opportunity. Yeah. And you taking this other opportunity, it's just going to create more of a buzz around your name. Right. And if that venue that you really, really wanted to get into wants you to play at your place and you're creating enough buzz and you're putting music and your socials are great they'll book you and they'll try to take you away from the other place. Yeah. But if you're playing at neither because you're holding out hope that you're going to play at this best place, how does that help you? I think in very rare situations, you can go all in on a venue, but you have to understand that you're probably going to get booked there in the next you know, six months kind of thing. But most DJs yeah. take the opportunity that's presented to you First, instead of holding out hope for this other opportunity, right. would you rather play at the second best venue in a market or, or not at all? Like, yeah, that's how I look at it. You could always make a move from the second best to the best, but that second best place will help your resume in getting booked in the best place, I think. So it's, it's kind of funny because this is happening a lot at the Jersey Shore and it happens every year at the Jersey Shore because it is a shortened, um, it's a shortened season, right? People are only down there for like four months and there's a handful of places that everybody wants to play and people have their eyes on certain venues and they'll, they'll hold out in other venues. But what you don't realize though, is when the season's over, if you went and played that, your, that second option, you know, maybe not your first pick, but if you, at least you went to go play your second option, it does improve your resume come fall when you come back into your regular market. Right. For sure. And I'm sure. And I'm sure that this happens across the country. Like, right. no matter this where you are. Every vacation area. This is a, every, this conversation works for every holiday spot. Right. So, you know, go play that other venue. And now you come back and you're like, well, I, I at least went and played X place and 
come September, it's like, well, maybe you could play the number one place in your market, in your regular market, right? Um, you're just making yourself look better. If you hold out and play nowhere, well, that's a whole season lost, number one. Right. A whole season of money lost, and you got to wait until next year. And are you going to get that opportunity next year? Are you going to wait around again? You know, and this could be an endless cycle. Like you have to, you have to take the gig that's offered to you and to, to make the money and, and to put your name out there a little more and create that buzz. Like you said, because it for helps summer with- or for summer or holiday markets, no one's making decisions or it's very rare for venues to make decisions on DJs this season. Like those decisions are made last season and through the off season. Yeah. And most of these places are booking their spots out well in advance, you know, like there's places that I work at that book the DJs for the entire summer in April and May. So yeah. if you're not in this summer, like you need to do all the networking that you need to do to be in for next summer. So who are those people that are making decisions? How do you get close to those people? How do you show those people what you're currently doing outside of their holidays, you know, seasonal area and, and go make the personal connection. And let them know, hey, I understand this year's probably fully booked out. If you ever need somebody, I would love to be here. For next season, what do I need to do to be here? Like that, that's, you have to plant those seeds this year for next year. Now, could you get put on this season? Maybe, maybe. But I think your brain should just be saying, I'm putting in the work now for next year. How much importance are you putting on spending all of your time to network maybe in for for this conversation in the jersey shore and taking your time away from your your regular market like should you be still gigging a little bit in your regular market we see like an exodus of djs up here and and we're we feel it you know our our company feels it because we we still have the gigs the gigs don't go away in the summertime they don't leave and go down the shore like everybody else does. You know, everybody leaves and goes down the shore and we're still left with gigs. Right. So like how, how much importance are you putting on going to network down the shore versus still gigging up in your home market? Like, should you st- maintain a balance? Like, yeah, because if, if you don't mean, if you don't maintain a balance, like you're hurting one, you're hurting one or the other, you know? We have, we've had this conversation with our DJs a number of times. Sometimes we need to remind them like, hey guys, our market is our, our home market is open 12 months a year. The market that you guys are all fighting to go DJ in is really open. It is open 12 months a year, but all the, the seasonal places are only open for three months a year. So right. like a, as a young DJ for me, yes, I was down the shore. Yes, I was Atlantic City. Yes, I was networking. But I never, ever, ever stopped playing in my main places in my home market in New York City and in Hoboken and Jersey City because I knew I'd sacrifice these three months to be able to have the nine, the rest of the nine months where it's peak up here in my home market. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if I was playing at, a, at my main club here two to three times a month, I was giving them at least once a month, at least. Right. Just to get in the door say what's up, make sure I'm still playing, make sure they they get to hear me DJ throughout the summer. And not for nothing, it shows that you care a little bit about the venue up here because they're hurting and they're struggling to book DJs too. So if right. their main fall and winter DJs still give them a couple dates, it's like one less thing to worry about. And you know, this for our DJs, it's the same thing. Like I get it, all you guys want to be down the shore and we've we've put videos in the chat about this but like, we still need you up here to give us something, yeah. you know, like we still need you to book our gigs that are happening 12 months a year. And it might I, not I guess, be the best gig in the summer here. It might be slower, but you know what? Like we all sort of have to suck it up a little bit. I, I, um, I come from a different perspective. I was never a shore person, right? Like never went, like I wasn't a DJ's regular. I wasn't a regular anywhere down the shore. I had shore houses, but like I went down, Monday to Friday. Cause I, I obviously I was a teacher and I gigged on the weekends here. So I, I treated my shore houses like a during the week th- uh, during the week shore house, not during the weekend to go party because I was working. I was, de- you know, I was DJing my favorite time of year to DJ up here is 
in, in the summer. I love being around New York City and and up in Hoboken and Jersey City in the summertime. It's really? a, you know, it's, I do. I, I, I like do. going there to hang out. I don't necessarily like going there to DJ because the rooms are 50% of what they normally are, if that. I, I like I like it because the sometimes you do have a little bit lighter crowds and there is more musical flexibility. I feel like I can get away with a lot more when, a, when there's a lighter room and test things out and really, you know, find out what the, the staff's into and, and kind of lean into that stuff and discover new music. And I, I've always used this as a grow my musical knowledge portion of the year. You know, I didn't have interest in going to play DJs or headliner or any of those places. Like it yeah, just I think didn't you're in the 1% me. on that one. <laughs> I am. I am, but that I would, I knew that, that just wasn't my style of music, right? Like when I played West five, that was, but it was the, the, that was the peak time for EDM music. Like everybody was a EDM DJ at that point. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just was never my style. And like, so th- I guess this really is anybody who's an open format DJ that's listening to this right now that, that thinks about North Jersey versus South Jersey, something to, to kind of think about. And I always felt like this time of year too is, it was great to go. I liked to go out a lot on, on the weekends up here. If I, if I had a night off, I can remember going to like, see you at Teak. Right. And like, I was able to then talk to the people that work there and get to know the people that work there. Cause it was a little slower than it normally was. And yeah. it just gives you more networking opportunity up here so that when September comes around, like, all right, well, Gary came out a lot this summer. Like, let's get him in the, let's get him in the rotation for, for the fall, you know, and now it's going to come back big. Now I just padded my stats from September to, to June, you know, and it's a better, it's a better financial play long-term. Well, I think that's a smart, it's the smart move in order to create those relationships in your home market, like you said, to set yourself up for the future. It's a, it is a long-term play and it's smart. And the reason why I've been doing this for 23 years, (laughs) right? It's part, it's part of the reason why DJs who are going to play in that seasonal zone still need to take care of their home market. You still need to play those residency spots that you play the rest of the year, whether it sucks or not, you just have to do it. Because the venues appreciate it. The venues want you there, you know? And yeah. like you said, maybe if, if there's a venue in your home market that you aren't playing in, it's a great opportunity to go and try and get in there for peak season, which would be the fall and winter. Yep. So yes, super smart and super strategic and going against the grain because all the DJs are at the seasonal venues trying to get in right now which is most likely not going to happen. I handful gained, of DJs will. I'm trying to think offhand. I can think of six different places that I gain residencies at because of doing this. Over, it was always know, over. New York city for me. I always made my New York city connections in the Big summer time. where I'd make my move into, into a club that I was trying to get into in the summer because those bookers were really looking for good DJs to play their room. And like, I would do it whether it was, Everyone was at the Hamptons or not. It was just good for me because I wanted right. to be there in September, like you said. Right. Yeah. So there's, there's a levels di- just to a- this shit, and there's levels to this shit. There's di- there's different ways to look at it, right? And I get those people that want to go play the biggest places down the shore. I understand it, right? But you got to remember those places still got to feed the, their local guys that, that are there all year round too. So not only are you competing with every other DJ from up here that wants to play there, but you're competing with the really good DJs from down there that deserve to play down there too. Right. And I know we're talking Jersey shore and North Jersey right now, but this goes for anybody's, you know, it goes for your market with your vacation spot. Right. Yeah. Cause everybody has it. New York everybody has Hamptons, has you right. know, Chicago has the lake. Like it's just, it is what it is. Right. Right. I, I would say, this is hard guys, like making these decisions, working through this strategy and like, it's very, very hard. It doesn't get easier as you continue through this. It just doesn't. And you can't always make a right choice. Right. But I think it is important to make a decision, right. And take action and, and make a move into doing something. Maybe it turns out that it was the wrong decision, 
Or maybe it turns out it was the best decision you ever made. You're not going to know when you're at that point, but you just have to do it, right? And hopefully more, you make more right decisions than wrong decisions and you set yourself up. And you can't kill yourself for for correct, right or wrong decisions. I've made a lot of wrong decisions that have in, in retrospect are like, damn, I kind of wish I didn't do that. But right. you know what? Like you got to just keep moving forward and, and, and work out of it. And if you create a big enough buzz and you create a big enough name, the places that you want to get booked at will come to you. Yeah. And I, I think that's something that's really important to think about. If you guys create enough buzz and you're playing enough good places and you're doing what you need to do on social and music, the best venues will come to you. Definitely. And that's it. That's it. It's not easy. It's not easy. I and mean, it's all preference. It, it, it's all preference, right? Like your preference was different than my preference, but you know, and we've, we've both had different successes, right? And you have to, you know, it, it, it all is dependent upon what you want and what the end goal is. Right. And this is why having a game plan and goals and, and a list of venues that you want to get into, like, that's why it's important to have this stuff. So then you can kind of take action on some of these things that you want to make happen. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, if you guys have questions about this stuff, like I just talked to a couple of our DJs in the last week about this type of stuff. Hit us up. You know, we're here to help. We've been through a lot of this shit. So we can sort of help you work through it. And it's not easy, like we said. So hit us up. <laughs> um, all right. I want to talk about something. And I hate to even bring this up because it's super cringe to me. I fucking hate it. But like the virality of some of the stuff that's happening with nightlife and with music, for example, the man in finance girl, the Hawk Tui girl, like it just drives me crazy and it gets blown out of proportion. It goes viral and then everybody's trying to get a piece of it. DJs are making a hundred edits and remixes of it. Everybody, all my group chats are talking about it. I'm like, shut up, shut up, please. I fucking hate it. I hate it. NY Mag just posted a, an article today on like, get to know the Hawk Tui girl. And it's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like NY Mag, are you guys kidding? Posting this today? Like who cares? This is a major Look, problem people. for, for not just our industry, but we're talking about music and the DJ industry and music industry. And like, it's yeah. a major problem for us it creates this like vir go viral and you make it. And that's the only thing that you should care about. Like it creates that in our, in our industry, in our culture. And I fucking hate it. I hate it. Yeah. It's, and it's all by chance, right? Like it's just by chance. Like there's no rhyme or reason for any of this. And, and for there to be this much attention put on this is, ridiculous it, just to be plain and simple it's just ridiculous um, it's ridiculous it it's what reminds me of when we were younger like one hit wonders like the people that made that one song right. that happened to go number one <laughs> on the radio or wherever it was getting played yeah and then that person never made another song that anyone ever cared about ever again and like that's I, sort of what going viral is right now it's like a one hit wonder you get lucky the viral the viral remix trend has been around forever, right? It's been around since YouTube became a thing, you know, back in 07. Um, I remember the first couple because I would play them. I would 100% I would play them, right? And people got a kick out of the methods. In, in many cases. I don't do it. I don't do it anymore. I don't, yeah, I I don't really got to draw. I got to draw the line somewhere. But like I used to do it back then because like, yeah, I'd be playing like an open format set and then you'd play like whatever the, the viral thing was at the time and people would love it. And, and I, I guess people still do love it. I think it's just being exposed to it for such a long time that I think it's tiresome. It's unoriginal. And I just feel like in our industry, originality is, is starting to fade a little bit. I, I'm not talking about battle DJs. I'm not talking about you know, scratch DJs, because that's, that is all a very original, um, artistry. But I, I mean like this, 
this need to try to create another viral hit out of something else that's viral is ridiculous and, and unoriginal. What are you listening to? Sorry, I was pulling up. Shout to Chumpy in digital music poll. He has he has like the Hawk 2E edit that's going viral right now. 3.2 million views. Jesus. And it is <laughs> he takes the sound and then chops it up over um give me everything. That build and it goes into something else. But like Okay. DJs are taking advantage, right? Like you're going to, you get a hundred edits and remixes of these various viral people. Yeah. You know, you have to, and we're you're sitting here being the, like, you know, I'm tired of it. I'm sick of it. It's, it's unoriginal, but like, I get, you do have to still do it. Right. Because there is demand. There's a lot of demand. Right? That's the problem. Like people, other DJs are seeing that, Oh, I can make an edit of this and it's going to go 3.2 million and it's going to help me in my career. So, right. I'm going to do it. And I totally understand it. I get it because it's, it could be a jump the line type thing, right? This person yeah. went viral for her thing. Maybe I can go viral and take advantage of this crazy popular thing that's happening. Right. And, 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 but like, as a, I hate that. But to your thing, like it takes, it's, there's no originality. There's no creative aspect to it. I mean, there's some, but like, Obviously, like Trumpian made one that people like. So there is a creative value to that. And like you have to actually do it. But it's just frustrating. And it's just like this the virality is more important than the actual music. Right. Which sucks and that, as someone who loves music and makes music. That's the disheartening portion of it. But for somebody trying to make it and trying to become the next big DJ, it's important to get involved in this stuff, right? I, I'm, I know I'm playing both sides of the fence here, but like it, it is important. Like if, if I was younger and I'm trying to be a producer, this is a great way to, to kind of break through right. in an easy way and a quote unquote easy jump way. Jump on every trend, right? Right. You should jump every it, trend. Like this is a strategy. Ian Asher took this strategy, right? Other DJs are taking this strategy and like it paid off for Ian Asher for sure. Yeah. Like he's now there. Now there is a, there is one gentleman on social media that I follow that I absolutely love that I feel like has used social media and virality in a positive way. And I feel like it was, not even original. It was just very easy. And he was just this guy called fish 56, 56 octagon fish, 56 yeah, you octagon. Put this, you put this in an email and I'm like, who the fuck is this? I never heard of this person dude from the UK. Right. And he's just pure entertainment. All he does is play a record. He's like, he just wants to expose people to good music. That's all he was trying to do. He wasn't trying to become viral. He wasn't trying. I don't think I think this is just a guy that genuinely loved house music and all different types of house music. UK garage, drum and bass, future rave. Um, I don't, definitely not future rave, but like something that was future rave 30 years ago. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, and it just every trance, like he does a lot, a lot, a lot of really amazing trance music, but then he gets super like happy hardcore and all of these like older genres that, have kind of been put to bed and he's kind of reintroducing people to where all these samples that you're hearing in, in production. Now he's not showing you the new production. He's just showing the, what the old production was. Right? right. And he's doing it all on vinyl and he was, he's like a vinyl junkie. Now he's gotten so big. He was doing like six to eight videos per day at one point. But like, he's like, I, I kind of was starting to run out of records. So like he would do MP3s and things like that. Right. But now people are like sending him records to play on his, on his Instagram. He does it in like a bathrobe. Like he's just chill about doing it. He's like eating a snack while he's doing it now. It's, it's just, but it's all really amazing music. And it really features where a lot of the house music that we know and love right now, kind of where it came from. And now he's getting booked all over the UK at every festival and, you know, he's playing festivals with that Carl Cox is headlining and, you know, he's get, getting to meet all these different people. And I think here's somebody who kind of went accidentally viral and accidentally uh, got booked at all of these festivals because of social media, but like in a good positive way, in my mind. 
Yeah, I think this is just someone who takes something that they love and puts it out into the world and people appreciate it, you know? There's I, I Habibi Beats, like he sort of did the same thing a lot during the pandemic. He was doing like the sample thing, which was pretty cool. And now he's like throwing his own parties and playing all over the country and getting booked. So like, I think these type of people are an example of they love the music. They're doing something for the music and for the culture and putting something into out into the world that they really love and care about. And in turn, people recognize that and they get popular. And I think that's like everything that's good about social media. Right, right. And virality so I, and people getting booked because of something they're doing on the internet. Right. Whereas yeah. the girl in finance has a song with David Guetta now and is getting paid $5,000 a show in Vegas to go jump around and whatever. <laughs> yeah. I don't, there's just two sides to every, to every story. Right. And, and, not that the, the the first thing that we talked about is all bad, but it is annoying <laughs> at the no. end of the day. <laughs> because listen, how many people are going to ask you to play like, yo, can you play that Hawk 2 re edit remix right. at, the, at your gigs this weekend? Probably yeah. a handful, you know? Yeah. It, it's a great way to connect with your audience as well, right? Like it's what everybody's talking about. You come out to a to a man in finance or a Hawk Tui intro, like people are gonna be like, "Oh my god, I can't believe you did that kind of thing." You know, like as All much right. as I did, can hate on it, you, I can also pull from it and use it to my advantage in my shows. You know what I mean? Did Did you download the man in finance, David Guetta? Yeah, I've I've had it. I mean, I I played a version of it before the David Guetta one came out. I won't even download it. I don't have I the champion edit yet, but I'll probably get it just to have it in my back pocket. Like I'm playing at a venue on Friday. That's very, it's all, it's young. Like it's super young. And like, I know that it'll work. Yeah. I, I guess the venues that I picked to play are not young. So like, not only will it probably fall flat, but I'll sound cheesy at the same time. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I really, I really believe that. And that's why I won't even, I won't even put it in my computer. Like, there's just no way. But I, I also play our venue, so I'm not going to get in trouble for for not playing it, you know? Right. I just have to put my foot down somewhere, and that's where, it's that's just, where I'm drawing you, the line. You and I do play very different places, right? Yeah, and it's definitely. just like... Very, very different. Something that could work for me in a bigger room, bottle service, young situation won't work for, like, the super open format, older crowd... Like it just won't, they won't connect to it. It doesn't make sense. And it will, in it'll make you disconnect from your crowd more so than anything, I think. Yes. Yeah. I'm playing probably more 27 and over crowds more right. than Like anything. I'm playing the NYU crowd on Friday. Like I, <laughs> like that's how you yeah. connect with them. You play stuff that they, right. that's viral that they know, you know? No, I understand. I understand that. Definitely. I, I think that's a good transition, right? Like, uh, we were talking off air and we were kind of talking a little bit in our discord about how the pop scene right now is in a really good place. And it's kind of driven by these female pop singers. It's all of the requests I'm getting are for these female pop singers. It's huge right now. I mean, Sabrina I Carpenter, just, right? Like her songs yeah. are, are the, my number one requested. I would say. Well, not only that, but it's the, it's the biggest the biggest track out period by far, not even close. Please, 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 please. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Somebody asked me for it last night. I couldn't believe that I didn't have the original because where I was at, like, I was like, I have to play the original. Like I'm not, I can't just right. the room that I was in needed the original. Didn't want, you know, Charlie Lane's remix, you know, and which is excellent. That's the one that I play. I think. And, um, so I went, I had a download on the spot and it, it's, that's not like a very club friendly track, but like all the remixes are, 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 are better, but, um, just all of those, you know, Chappelle Roan and, and Charlie XCX, which I didn't realize how big all of this was until I started to prep for my sets this for these two weeks. Cause I've, I've been off for about a month and, uh, 
I feel like it's just been like an explosion in June of all of these female singers that are just like taking over the pop world again. Like we've saw how big country got for a little bit. Now it feels like, okay, now we're going to lean into this female pop thing for the summer because it just feels summer. It really does. Like, right. And it feels summer up here specifically. Um, it's just really good for everything that's happening in the city right now, especially surrounding pride and, and having pride month in June. And these are all very LGBTQ um, friendly artists that are just heavy. Like it's all that's being played in, in those venues uh, and, and will be remixed a million times by, you know, all the, all the DJs that do run that circuit. Um, and I, th I feel like it's also maybe timing. Like, was this record label timing? That, or is this just by chance that all of these female pop vocalists are coming out and, and hitting really hard around June, around Pride, where they can hit all the festivals and they can hit all of the things, all the musical things that happen around all the Pride festivals around the country, you know? Um, because you, there's just dollars in it. There's so many dollars in it, like showing up to these festivals and, and, and performing for all of these uh, artists, because you're just not doing it right now with just streaming anymore financially as an artist, right? You have to show up and you have to play live, live shows. And, and I just feel like it's a really good time for this to hit. I love it. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind it. I, I mean, I don't mind it. I think the songs are fine. I think I don't have like, the best go-to remixes or edits of them yet. I'm going to probably make my own this week because they are so popular. And I, there's a gap, right? I always tell you guys, like I make edits when there's a gap in my set. I have a gap in my set with some of these vocals on, you know, not, I, I need something to play at that 11 PM midnight time with these vocals. Yeah. And I just don't have them. I have like the new disco house version and like the, the 10 p.m. Right. versions of these songs, which is what they're made to be, right? But I think right. as a club DJ, it's important. You need to take advantage of these popular songs and make them work in your set, right? I'm not playing 10 p.m. open sets in most cases. So I need the I need the the peak hour with that with these vocals to connect with hey, my audience somewhat. Hey DJs, wanna like make it in the remix world right now? Like any Chappelle Roan remix would be amazing at this point because yeah, I, there's a lack. There's a lack. And especially like this weekend, I'm like looking at it. I'm like, I really need something for the peak hour sets for all the pride events that I'm doing. And I don't have anything right now. Um, I'm well, like give it a couple, give it, give it about 10, six hours. And I might have some edits for you. <laughs> thank, thank goodness. I need That's on my there's a lack for, for the day. <laughs> but yeah, like I, I think we've seen this, some waves, right? We've seen different waves happen. We had the Latin wave a couple of years ago, Bad Bunny driving that. We had the country wave, which is still going. On the dance music side, we've had the techno wave. Now it's like, we, we've had the female rapper wave, which is still going, right? So I think yeah. right now it's this like pop vocal female singer wave. And it, obviously Taylor is like the, kind of at the top of that. And sort of yeah. drives that ship as well. But I think these young artists are really coming in and making music that really connects to audiences in the summer, you know, feel good, chill, good vibes type stuff. Yeah. Your girl, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I said off air, like, I don't know. I don't get the Taylor thing. Like her music is depressing and slow and boring. Yeah. Who wants to listen gotta, to that? Ah. I got to move my plug real quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's why all the remix, like all the remixes obviously work because Taylor's so popular, but like at no point am I ever playing an original Taylor Swift song in any situation, unless it's like first dance at a wedding or something like, and I don't do those. So <sighs> like just boring, depressing music. It's, it's not for everybody. It's for a lot of people though. It's for every it's for everybody except me. For apparently. everybody. <laughs> You're the only one. <laughs> you know, you know what grinds my gears? Like I see Travis Kelsey, like he don't like that music. Shut up, Travis. You don't like that music. Give me a break. 
<laughs> Travis is listening to Gunna in the car. He's not listening to Taylor Swift. Give me a break. Oh, man. <laughs> Poor Taylor. She just gets it. <laughs> Shout to Taylor Swift, biggest artist in the game. Yeah, seriously. Generational. I can, I can hate a little bit. Oh, yeah. All right. Hold on, hold on. Before we before we wrap, I just want to talk a little more. So what... It's early in the summer, right? We're almost in, we're late June here. Right. What is, do we have a, candidates for song of the summer? Do we have, I know we talk a lot well, about I, dance I, music here. I have a couple in dance music, but like, is Sabrina Carpenter like song of the summer right now? I'd like to say right now, please, please, please is, is you know, is, it's the is, most is requested there. song by far for that. And actually the Kendrick, not like us is probably the number one. After that, it's Sabrina Carpenter. We sat at dinner on Monday with a bunch of DJs that said that they don't play not like us, which was. I don't like it, so I try not to play it unless it's like I have to kind of thing. I I play it like I like the like the the beginning of it. I get out of it pretty quickly, but I just play it to kind of scratch everybody's itch, you know, yeah. that, that that needs to hear it. I have a cool intro that has like an OV ho chant that goes into it. That's pretty good. And it sort of like yeah. sets everybody up for what's coming, which I like. But yeah. like, unless I'm not playing it unless I have to play it. And for a while I sort of had to play it because it's just so big. It still is. It still is. It still is. So I, in is that going to be the song? Of the, is that going to be the song of the summer? What? Still? Like us? Is it just going to hold? Is it just going to hold on? I think it is nah, right I think- now for sure. That would be yeah. my song of the summer. Right as far as popularity and working kind of everywhere. But like, I don't always play those rooms where I can play the original of that. So, right. As far as dance music, um, I pose the question on Twitter and threads. I've been like trying to be way more active on those spaces, guys. So if you want to throw me a follow, it's just at DJ cream NYC, just like posing questions like song of the summer type stuff. Um, you know, what, how many hours is the perfect set? Like very, like just random stuff like that, that sort of gets a conversation going that I think is always up for debate. So follow me there. Yeah. Uh, but the song and dance music that I, for me, that I just love and want to fit into every one of my sets is disclosure, disclosure. She's gone dance on. It's just like the perfect end of it's, night, feel good, great vibes track or, or rooftop been, stuff. I've been playing a peak. Like I've been working at peak at points because it's just so feel good. And it kind of perks everybody up a little bit, even though like my, my, that's, that's what peaks doing it anyway. Like I just, I see such like a happy reaction to it when I play it. And it's just, I didn't know if anybody would be like, would know it. I don't think everybody does know it. I think it's just that good. Yeah. That even if they don't know it, they're like, Oh, this is great. Like this, what a, what a track this is. I would agree with you. Um, it's just good vibes on in a track. It's, like it's, it's just good vibes song. in a track. Yeah. Great song. Love There's it. There's not a lot of tracks that have come out in the last couple of years that I can think of that just give that vibe where like it doesn't matter who you are in the room, you're affected by it by this song being played in some way. Yeah. And then I so. think a couple other songs that are, are very popular and maybe in contention here early in the dance music world would be uh, Dom Dollar Girls. Mm-hmm. And also the the Luffy uh, last night the Anma remix, which is like dark and dirty and doesn't necessarily translate. To I won't every play. room, but I won't play. That it works track because of the, for sure. It works. I, I'm just shocked because it's a Diddy track. Yeah, you know, I was I was thinking the same thing. Like, I can't believe this song got so popular I with everything that was happening with Diddy. I just don't think people know that it it's a Diddy track. I won't. I, I love the song. I won't. I just, I can't bring myself to do it. I don't care. I about feel that. like somebody's going to yell at me. <laughs> I hope somebody yells at me and I'll laugh in their face. <laughs> like it's like music it. guys. It's not making any kind of kind of, kind of statement. We're, right. we're, we're playing music. Right. And Diddy's not even on that track. The no, he's not. Night. I realize that. I realize that, but. Am I shying away from Diddy? Yeah, yeah. Like songs where he's actually on it. Yeah. In this case, no. Definitely not. Yeah. Yep. All right. I think this is a good place to wrap, right? Definitely. Um, Anything we want to promo? 
I would say, guys, uh, if, if you want to connect with us, uh, join the Grow My DJ Business Discord. We've been really trying to grow this out and get a ton of DJs in there. And we're just really trying to create this cool community. Uh, Gary sharing curated playlists. We're putting exclusive edits for myself, Two Face, some of the other Get Down DJs. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just a great place to connect with DJs. We're putting a bunch of gigs in there now this summer because we do need help on bookings. <laughs> um, but yeah, like Gary and I are in there. It's a great place to connect and talk with us. Ask us questions about the podcast. You know, if you guys need help, yeah. it's a great place to connect with us. So. Uh, the link for that is in the Discord. It's also in all of our profiles. And uh, we hope you guys join that. Other than that, man, Gary and I have been sort of taking a, a TO here in the summer. We know how busy we get in August and beyond. And I think yeah, it's just been a great opportunity to kind of take a step back, assess the business, pull back on some things that maybe aren't necessarily... Uh, growing our business and, and enjoying the summer a little bit, man. That's it. It's been nice. So. All right, guys. All right, guys. Thanks for listening to this episode. We will talk to you guys soon. Peace. All right, guys. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Get Down Podcast. If you enjoy our show and find the topics entertaining or helpful in any way, we would greatly appreciate if you could subscribe, rate, and review our podcast wherever you listen to it. We want to help more DJs, and subscribing, rating, and reviewing the show is the best way for us to do that. We appreciate all the love so far. Thanks for listening, guys.